In this video, I'm going to look at rendering, lighting, and textures. So we're going to really look at how these work together to create an aesthetic and a look that we, we may want to achieve. It's really important to understand them, um, how they influence each other, and how you can get the best from, from working with some, some settings and um, really just kind of getting your work improved in this way. So this is really specific for working in Maya, um, the render settings, because when you take it out to, for example, a game engine, you may find that um, your look is completely different. So to do this, I'm going to create a cube. So create polygon primitives cube. I'm just going to press go there, and I'm going to press F on the keyboard to focus in on that. So I'm turning on the smooth shade option here, and also the textured option as well. Finally, use all lights just so I can see how the lighting is affecting the, the viewport. So it goes dark. So this is actually turning off the default lighting that I have. Now one final thing I'm going to do is just go to the shading option on the viewport and turn on back face culling. Now that will allow me to see through the object. But at the moment the, the normals of the object are facing outwards. So I'm actually seeing the whole object there. But if I'm in the polygon menus, I can look at the normals here and I can turn it to reverse. And you see now I should be able to see inside this object um, because it's so dark. I'll just turn that off for a minute. Can't actually see what's in there. But I can see through the faces to look inside the object. So the next thing I want to do with this is just change two of these faces and assign new materials to them. So I've, I've set the object to be a face, to be on the faces option. I'm going to assign new material and I'm going to select a new Lambert. And first of all, I'm going to create a, a green face with that. And then if I rotate that round, I should be able to see that that's turned green. I also want to change this face. And so I select it, right click it, assign new material. I it to be a Lambert, and I want that one to be red. Now what I'm creating here is something called a Cornell's box. And Cornell is a, a university in the United States, and um, they developed this Cornell's box concept to really test render settings and try and compare them when created digitally to a um, to a photograph that they had taken of a of an actual box that they'd created. So now I have this render here. I can see through the the faces there. If I render it, I'm actually seeing the outside. So what I'm going to do is just take this last face here, and I'm going to make this transparent. So this is the first one. I, I often delete these. Just delete the face, which which helps. But Today, I'm just going to make that transparent. So, I'm going to assign a new material, which will be a Lambert. I'm just going to bring the transparency right up. And I can see this sample has disappeared. And that should allow me to see inside the object there. So, finally, I can put that back to object mode and just focus in on that and get a good angle of the camera, sort of near to the center as possible. And again, I'll just render that to see it. And you can see within this, render view here, I get very flat shaded colors. Um, some of them are not showing at all because the, the light's not in there. So the next stage for me now is to create a light. So I go to the create menu here and from the lights option I'm just going to select point light. Now I tend to use point lights and spotlights as much as possible and if it's a very large scene I'll use a directional light. Some people use ambient lights a lot, but I tend to avoid those because they, they don't have the subtlety that you can achieve with a point light. So now I've got this light. I'm going to bring it near the top of the, uh, the box. And so I'm simply going to re-render that one. I'm going to save this last file. If I click on this um, green icon here, I can keep that image. So I'll be able to look back at that one. So now you can see. Compared to the last image, I have got a much better look, and I'm seeing the whole 
the whole scene there without changing any of the settings, just adding a light allows me to kind of have different different kind of textures to this this green. I can see this dark bit here, a, a lighter bit here, um, a hot spot on the top where the, the light's sort of shining on there. Um, and you're getting a lot more a lot more for, from this. So I'm actually going to save that image and for the rest of these I'm going to just zoom in again slightly so I can see further in. Now there's some simple things that I can see within here. I can see a slight jagged edge on, on these straight lines which are in the in the scene here. Now that's something you might not be able to see on the video but that's a very quick thing to fix um, and it may just by changing the render settings in the render view here um, at the moment it's working on a draft quality I can just change it to production quality in here. So I'm working on the Maya software renderer but I'm just going to update that slightly and put it onto production quality and re-render that save that again, re-render that and I can see my lines have smoothed up. It's using an anti-alias along those. Um, and if I flick between them, I can tell the difference on those ones. So again, I'll just save that image. If I want to save this to a file, I can go to File, Save Image from within the render view. So to take this a step further, what I'm going to do is create another polygon, but I'm going to create a polygon of a cone. Now this is a overly large, because I'm working to very single units here, and I just want to have this object in here just to see how it gets affected by the colors. So I'm going to get to rotate it a little bit, and just so I can have, have a look at how that works. So again, I'll go back to the render view and render that one, and I can see it is getting a nice kind of light. The light is kind of going around it. I can see this this grey area here and the dark areas where the, the, the shade um, but it's not fully realistic, it's not it hasn't got a, a shadow or anything like that so again I'll take that to another stage what I first of all do is assign a material to that I'm going to assign a, an existing material now I haven't labelled these very well but I'm pretty sure the last one I made was white so I'm just going to, oh no that was transparent <laughs> I wouldn't see anything if I had that one So. Assign existing material, Lambert 4 should be a white colour there. So that should um, change that slightly. And so it has lifted that again, between that from that grey to that white. So using that colour ha has lifted that up. What I want to see is a shadow under here. So what I need to look at now is the attribute settings for this shadow, for this light. If I click on the light within the viewfinder here, viewport here, it's actually a little bit tricky. Yeah, I've, I've lassoed it there. Um, you may be able to find that in the the, <coughs> the outliner. I can see I have different settings here. I've got the colour and the intensity. I can also change what type of light it is from within these attributes as well. So it's using the attribute editor, um, which you can get using Control A. To, to bring that up if you don't have it. Within this attribute I've got shadows here and what I'm first of all going to do is just say use depth map shadows. Because I'm not using ray tracing, I'm using Maya software in this, I'm unable to, to use the ray tracing method. But if I just render that one now I should find that I'm getting a shadow cast from the, this light on the top there. So I can see that that the angle of this has actually given me quite a strong strong shadow all around this area. Um, and that may be something that I work with. I may be able to, if I, if I want to composite this image, I may render out single layers and have the shadow on a separate layer and just allow that to uh, become, become softer. So again, this is single light in there and that may be something that I want to change. So I'll keep that shadow option on and I'll also just save my bookmark my camera position there because what I want to do now is just zoom out slightly and create a new light uh, which is going to be a spotlight and this is going to take the, the just fill the edges in because I'm thinking that that light's too too strong. So I'm going to create a spotlight here and just take that back within this scene 
Um, and again, take another shot of that, which is an odd angle. So I'm just going to check that I saved that last. I didn't save the last one actually, but never mind. Um, so within this, again, I'm going to create a bookmark there, but I should be able to go back to my bookmark and re-render that. And you can see it's lifted that shadow slightly. So this spotlight has actually given a lift to that. Um, and it may be, again, that I just want to change that slightly. So I can right click in there. Um, I'm just going to just tilt it up slightly so that it's probably going to lift that darker area under the cone there. Um, again, I need to render the correct position. Um, and yes, I think that's really slightly lifted that, that shadow from the original image there. And that really helps, helps the look. And I could, I could work with that slightly. OK, so what I'm, I'm not seeing now is a kind of real final effect whereby some of these colors would bleed into each other. So I'm working with that. I've got two lights in there. Now I really want to look at some of the uh, render settings. Now the main render settings I've got, the re render options I've got are Maya Software, Maya Hardware, Mental Ray and Maya Vector. So I'm going to use Mental Ray now. Mental Ray is a very popular one. So I'll just render that as a Mental Ray option. And you can see it's got slightly different look to it. So a bit of a kind of fuzz on the, on the shadows there and it has some uh, sort of pixels that kind of, well, it's jagged edges on the straight lines. So again, I'm going to have to go into the render settings. And first of all, I'm going to go into the quality setting. And I can see that that's on draft. So what I'll do, I will just scroll down to where it says production. And now I'll use that as the basis for my, for my render settings. If I render that again. I'm finding that I've got much, much better lines. The straight lines are a lot better. I'm just going to press this one to one, which gives me a full size image of, of what I'm working with. Sometimes it does make it slightly jagged with, with having a, a shrunken image. So if I use the one to one size, it works well. So that's improved it slightly. I can again flick back between them. I can see the, the detail on this, the shadow and this. These edges are, are getting straightened up. Another thing I might do is actually go back and look at the light again. So I can go into the shadows here. And what I might do is, oh, I'm working with a spotlight at the moment. So what I will do is I'll just select the point light. The spotlight isn't set to cast shadows at the moment. So I'm going to just to use the ray trace shadows instead of the bitmap, the uh, depth map shadows. So now I'm going to render that one. And I can see it's actually come up a lot stronger. I'm getting a slight kind of straight edge on the cone, but I think that's the, the definition of the cone, and that's something that I work on with the modeling. So it's not actually 100% relevant to, to what I'm doing now. So that's using the the shadows, different shadows for different features. Now what I may want to do is have this kind of color bleed between them. So some of the advanced settings within the mental ray feature. So I've put it onto a preset, which is production. There's some features you may want to look at. I'm just Initially, I'm just going to turn them all on. Uh, global illumination, final gather, and ambient occlusion. I'm going to turn these three on. Um, you will, by experimenting the, with these, find that you don't need to have them all on. This will actually increase the render time considerably as it goes through and um, changes the settings. But what you should be able to see from this is that I've got this kind of red overspill from this on this white here and also on the, on the cone. You're also getting a green hue kind of coming off the, the other elements. So it's really bouncing the light around. So this allows it to kind of mix the light and, and really kind of paint paint with the light within your scene. So I'll, I'll save that. And then I'll just turn off this final gather and ambient occlusion just to look at those 
separately. So the global illumination, so we're thinking, okay, well, the global illumination is, is not doing a huge difference. So I'll just see what the final gather does on its own. And you're seeing the final gather is actually the one which is creating this overspill. So I know now that that's probably the one I should use. And again, ambient occlusion, I'll have a look at that one and see if that's something I want to have on my image. So again, um, I should see a sort of darkening around the corners of the work. Um, but it's the final gather that actually really kind of has that light spill. If you want that feature, then, then you need to kind of look at that and turn that on. There's a lot more detail you can go into with this. So finally, you may want to work with your textures within this system. And um, it's a great, there's some great options to do. So once I've set up my, um, my, my settings for my rendering that I want to use, then I can start looking at the textures in a lot more detail. So I'm just going to select the texture editor there. If I want to see the render update as I work, which is really useful, um, I can click on this IPR option here, which gives an interactive preview of the render. So I'll just highlight around the render view where, where I want to sort of update it and have a look at it. And just make sure that I've got my cone in there. So I've selected the box. So I didn't want to move that. What I actually want is that cone, but it's inside the other the other part. So I'm just going to flick to the outliner, pick the cone, and then flick back. So for a start, I can move the cone within my scene, and I'll see that it's actually changing the scene as I move it. So I can see it, and I can see the update I've got in there. Um, and I can see where the shadow's going. I can change the settings and really find out how that's working. If I assign a new material to this, and I'm going to assign a blend to that. And I just really want to play with that. So it's come up shiny now, so I can see how that material reacts. And if I double click that, I can start playing with the, the settings for that blend. So again, if I have a, a color for the blend, I'll see how that, that reacts with the other elements within that. Uh, if I use it as a, a white element, I can see how that, that reacts. Um, can also put a bit of transparency on it. So if I make it about 50% transparent, that should have a very different look. Um, and then perhaps have a, a color. Again, I'm going to go for the blue. Um, I'm really working up a kind of transparent look here. There's all sorts of other elements. I'll put the reflectivity up. And you can see how it's really reflecting everything else. So it's a matter of looking at these these images and seeing how they work, seeing how the, the different elements work within it. And you can even just locate a small area of the screen to, to render very quickly. So if I say, I just want to look at this part, I can get that rendering very quickly. Um, and you can see the difference. It's a huge difference it can make from one parameter. So when you're changing a few different parameters, this is really useful. And especially when you're getting used to different elements that you're, you're working with. Okay, so that's a, a brief look at how you can work with your um, different render settings, your lighting, and your colors within a, within a kind of very controlled environment of a Cornell's box. So if you look up Cornell's box on the internet, you'll find a lot of information. Um, Cornell University did a lot of research into rendering and uh, 3D work.